Alright, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you would attach a basic rail to a standard two-piece military style handguard. Now there's another number of reasons why you might want to do this. It's a fairly lightweight option compared to some of the bigger handguards out there. It's also a pretty inexpensive option if you want to be able to put a vertical hand grip on or put something like a light on without a lot of monetary investment this is a good way to get started with that so just to show you what we're gonna need for this project for this rail it just uses a either a Phillips head or a flathead so I've got a Phillips head that I'm gonna use with this we're gonna put on a vertical foregrip and there is a special tool that you can use to take off the delta ring. I don't typically use that, but it's definitely an option that's available if you have difficulty getting yours off, or if you're going to be doing it a lot, it can make it a little bit easier. So we'll set those aside. So basically, to pull this delta ring off, you're just going to pull it back. And for this project, we're just going to take off this bottom rail. You can set the gun aside. Now you'll notice inside the handguard here is a heat guard. Now some people will actually put the screws on over the heat guard. If you decide you want to do that, then you can go ahead and install it right now. Uh, what I actually prefer to do is install it underneath the heat guard. So I'm going to show you. To remove that, you're basically just going to pull it away. It doesn't hurt to have something to help you kind of pry it. You're just going to pull this away. And slide it out. And then you just have an open handguard. Now you'll notice as you go to install this rail that there's some actual knobs on the back that are going to correspond to these holes. So you'll want to go ahead and line those up and decide how you want to position the rail. You can position it pretty much all the way towards the front or towards the back. So if you need to take a minute to kind of play with that and figure out where exactly you want it, I'm going to have it towards the front, but not quite all the way. So I'm going to have it about there. And then once it's in place, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to start inserting the screws into the opposite side. Once they're in there, I'm going to go ahead and tighten down. Now I've found that these don't actually need to be really cranked down. That heat guard's going to kind of help keep them in place, keep them from moving. So I like to make them snug, but not too tight. Now with that in place, we're going to go ahead and put this heat guard back in. It's just the same process in reverse. You will notice though, if it was a tight fit, which usually it is, that because of those screws in the bottom, it's going to be a little more difficult to get it back into the place it was. So you may have to push just a little bit harder. And you can see the heat guards installed with our rail in place. So we're going to go ahead and install it back onto the gun. So now the installation of the handguard is going to be just the reverse of the removal. I'm going to start by putting it in up here, and then you're going to compress the delta ring, push it back in back here. Okay, now that's installed in place, and we're going to go ahead and This particular one, you actually screw back the bottom of the handle here, slide it onto where you want, and there's actually 
a little hole there to line up one of the slots. Tighten it down and you have a vertical foregrip mounted on the standard plastic military style handguard. Now adding a rail to the plastic handguard is a pretty inexpensive and pretty lightweight option. There are obviously four railed options out there. This is a Yankee Hill lightweight and even though the name says lightweight it's still generally going to be heavier than the plastic handguards. Also I find that with the Yankee Hill design once you add on a protector to help cover the rails, keep you from cutting your hands up, that it tends to be very, uh, tends to be a very large diameter. Yankee Hill also, Yankee Hill also makes what they call their diamond pattern, which I think looks a little bit nicer than the lightweight version, but it's still pretty much the same diameter and it's going to be about the same weight in my experience. These do give you more rail space if that's what you're after. And as you can see on the top here, the rail extends along the top. So that gives you an option for mounting either your optic further forward, mounting things like backup sights, and if you had a laser or night vision device it would allow you to mount that there. One of my preferred styles and what I'm probably going to start using from now on is a, a smooth tube or something like the M-Lock system. I have here one of Yankee Hills customizable free floats. Uh, this is the first one that I got but this kind of allows you to have an aluminum free float tube so it gives you the advantages of free float, a little bit extra durability with the aluminum but let you add or remove rails where you want them or if you decide you don't need them anymore. So it lets you have rails where you want them, rails where you need them, but have a smooth, a little bit lower profile profile everywhere else. So this is probably what I'm gonna, this kind of style, either the Yankee Hill or maybe some of the newer M-Lock style forearms is what I'm probably going to be using in the future. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know if there's any other of these kind of videos that you want to see.